Full Melt Show is intended for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, adult content, and sometimes adult language. Listener discretion is advised. Melt. Now to that controversial church that has everyone talking. Tonight, founder Bill Levin not only hosted a packed second service, but took his call straight to the state house. Today, he announced he is suing state and city officials for their refusal to allow parishioners parishioners to smoke marijuana during their service. While he's upset with the way he's being treated, his neighbors are also dealing with the fallout from his message. RTV 6s Chance Walser joins us live now with the very latest. Chance? For the second straight week, police have reported no arrests at the church service. Here at the State House, founder Bill Levin uh, announced he is filing a lawsuit against state and city officials, making it clear he intends to make his case in civil, not criminal court. At the second ever service for the First Church of Cannabis, members packed the pews. As promised, founder Bill Levin is fighting for legal legitimacy with the lawsuit. He filed it today against the state of Indiana and the city of Indianapolis. We're taking legal action today to ensure love has no barriers in our land. He and his legal team plan to use the newly enacted Religious Freedom Restoration Law as a defense against laws that keep them from smoking cannabis at church. Their sacrament is marijuana. Marijuana is something that provides them peace. It's a healing herb. They believe that that's something that is a positive thing. While some neighbors welcome the church's presence, others, like Jim Cantor, would just as soon see it go away. The uh, police uh, presence has really increased. The walking traffic's really increased. The, the, uh, in a normal neighborhood, there's been, you know, parking issues. So this is going to be the design. That All this, he do. says, now surrounding the real estate investment his construction company has made in this area. In the last three years, he's flipped several houses with plans to build on newly acquired lots. When other people come and uh, want to talk about a new home or improving their home here, how are they going to look at this? Will it stay or will it go? And if it stays, what will be the sacrament of choice? Inquiries with answers now likely to be found in civil court. Listed as defendants in the suit are Indiana's governor, attorney general, and police superintendent from the city. The defendants are the mayor, police chief, and the Marion County Sheriff. The church is now awaiting uh, the response to the lawsuit. They expect to hear a response in the next few weeks. Live downtown, Chance Walser, RTV6. Are you high? Hi. What are you talking about? This is the full melt the Full Melt Show. A marijuana discussion about news, news culture, culture, politics, and lifestyle. FullMelt.com. Toll free. 844-420-TALK. 844-420-TALK. I love it. 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 There's something new uh, in the news every day about marijuana on the TV on the radio, in the newspaper, in the blogs, on the vlogs, on YouTube. Marijuana slash cannabis slash hemp is now everywhere. And that's why we do a radio show about it. Because, uh, you know, it's kind of important that you uh, keep up on what's going on with the weed these days. You got to keep track of it. You got to put a collar on it. Make sure it's inside the fence of the yard, lest that lead, weed get out. It might get put down if it bites somebody. I'm just saying. Uh, so, yeah, lots of stuff happening, and I'm so excited about it. You know, uh, I think this, uh, I have to give credit to RTV. Uh, it is the Indie Channel um, down there in Indianapolis. It's the local ABC affiliate, Channel 6, RTV 6 to go by. Um, Got to give them credit for that news piece here at the front. I wish they had, um, because I don't, you know, it seems to me when I, let me tell you the story. So here's what happened. Yesterday, uh, in in preparation for what I knew was this uh, uh, lawsuit, pending lawsuit, probably going to come down uh, from the lawyers working on a case for the first church of cannabis in Indiana. Indiana. And uh, they're right there in Indianapolis. And uh, so now I, I... I saw that the, you know, Bill Levin had posted something on his Facebook page 
that there was going to be a press conference, but he wouldn't talk about what it was. And usually, see, in the world of press conferences, the whole purpose of having a press conference is putting out a press release, right? You put out a press release, and then everybody goes to the press conference. That's how they know that the press conference is going to happen. I mean, before, you know, pre-Facebook days, <laughs> do you remember those? Does anybody remember the pre-Facebook days? <laughs> you can't make really a press conference, really. A press release isn't released on a Facebook page. You kind of got to notify the news departments. You got to type up a press release, the who, what, the where, when, the why, and the how, and put it there on bl- in black and white. And what they'll do is they'll get a glimpse of what you're talking about, and if they got interest in the story, they'll send a news crew out, right? That's how it goes. Now, this story was already pre-palmed. It was already lubricated for news. I, I, this was a no-brainer for news editors, this story. If something was happening in a major way with this story, especially in that area, they're going to send a little news crew out there. I mean, they kind of got to do that. It's going to definitely make the headlines. Now, when I... When I saw this press conference was going down, I knew that I'd already kind of scheduled Bill Levin to come on the program after the press conference, but before his service at 7 o'clock yesterday evening. And so when I got a hold of Bill and confirmed that the press conference was going down, which was it took a little while because after he posted that Facebook post, I'm sure he got bombarded by people. Which is why you put the press release out so they don't go calling you. They go to the press conference, right? That's how it's supposed to go. (laughs) At least in my entire career, that's how it's always went. (laughs) So I don't know that Bill gets the concept of the press release, and I don't know who's working on that for it. He should probably, now that he's getting all this national attention, get a guy running, uh, like, be a publicist for him or be, like, uh, you know, some kind of media wrangler. Uh, at least put out a a proper press release. So what happened was I knew that this was going on, and I really wanted you to get that audio on the front of yesterday's show, which was the press conference in its entirety from beginning to end. And there's a web page. i got to give them credit. I'll tell you what, after the break. I'll look it up uh, during the break because I really need to give them credit. Um, That's where that audio came from because I called originally RTV6. Because I figured this would be, again, a no-brainer. It's, it's got to be on their list of stuff to do. Well, they didn't know about it yet. And so they're like, wait a minute, what's going on? Why didn't we know about this? What's, let me hang on a second. And then they got off the line, and they fumbled around, and they talked to some people, and they got back on the line, and they go, yeah, you know. Um, it, so I reminded them that I was calling from this area and that I was looking for some audio from that press conference. And if they had sent a reporter out there, that I'd like to get a copy of that raw audio, and I'd, I'd use a clip of it and give them, give them some credit for it. Uh, as it turns out, it ended up being a news tip, just a glorified news tip, because they didn't know about it, and then they sent this reporter out there. And then, unfortunately, they, you know, because the guy at uh, the, the newsroom was like, yeah, I'll either get back with you myself, or uh, I'll send the, uh, I'll get the news reporter to call you back. And um, I don't know what happened, because uh, I never got a call back. I never got uh, an email. I gave him the email. It, it never happened. So that was my big story about this thing with these guys yesterday. That's the news piece that that reporter put together as a result of the news tip that I sent him that Bill was having the press conference out there on the state house lawn. <laughs> and if you look at some of their former stories, the only way they knew about, and they quote this in other articles right there online in the RTV6 stories, um, Every, and the newspapers do this, too. They quote Bill Levin's Facebook page. They'll take, a, a, like, a screenshot of the Facebook page, and then they'll put some text underneath it saying, you know, Bill Levin's making an announcement about this or that. Um, I just find it a new and um, interesting way. Maybe somebody should have, like, pressrelease.com or something. And maybe everybody go over there and uh, do their press releases there. Something's got to happen because it seems like that's uh, one of those things that's getting lost between the old way and the new way. And I'm not sure how many people were paying attention necessarily to the new way. I mean, because what if nobody goes to your web page, you know, if your personal Facebook page or your business Facebook page doesn't have those news organizations signed up to it, they haven't liked the page yet, then how would they know? They'd have to get some kind of tip from somebody else who saw it on the page. I don't know this. It, to me, it, as a journalist, it just doesn't seem to be the most direct method of getting a hold of the ring in the news bells. So that's what was going on there today. 
Let me tell you, there's a lot of other stuff happening. Uh, I just got to check the time. Where are we at here? Uh, oh, we're coming up. Our break is happening fast. Get it out, Steve. Um, so here's what's going on. There's this um, a story about, and and I guess we'll have to talk about it after the break. Um, the, the idea is that these people in Oregon have been cleared by the TSA. <laughs> you would think that they would have. I don't know. TSA is all about, aren't they all about protecting people against terrorist threats? The TSA is not the DEA, but they do kind of work closely with them. They can now fly with recreational marijuana on board. That's what the big headline is. Uh, So we'll talk about that after the break. Also, uh, bad news for a responsible Ohio. I think I mentioned this in a previous show, but it just kind of in passing. It didn't go into it in any great detail. Just kind of the headline. Uh, there's a story in the weed blog today about how, uh, you know, there's been a lot of bad news for them lately, culminating most recently in the raid of one of these 10 investors homes, uh, or businesses. I'll have to double check the article, but it was a raid. And so that's not faring well for the people, uh, behind the responsible Ohio campaign either, given that they just turned in all those signatures. We'll talk about that. Also. (laughs) <laughs> and I think this story is just plain funny. <laughs> <coughs> Yahoo has a story today talking about munchies making marijuana smokers gain weight. <laughs> Isn't that a no-brainer? I mean, who had to do this study? But there's a study out. They studied the pot smokers uh, and separated them from the cigarette smokers and everything. Talking about how uh, marijuana, if you smoke the marijuana, you might gain a little weight. I don't know what made them think that that was not going to necessarily be the case. There are some things that it seems just don't need studying. Uh, Is it just me? Is it or is this just uh, setting up another hanging Chad thing in Florida? The election debacle there with another Bush in the race. There's a story today that it's not marijuana related, but seeing how that Florida's got marijuana on the ballot again this year. uh, Do they? I don't know. It's, it's bobbling around. I think they're trying to get it done again. They failed in the last election cycle. Uh, but the Florida Supreme Court orders new congressional maps with eight districts down there. Uh, that stuff came down the pike today, and I thought it was uh, at least something that I should mention. Because uh, when, you, when you talk about the presidential race happening, and let's face it, marijuana's on the line in the presidential race. All this could come down to hanging on this little dinky news story dingling out in the background that nobody seems to be paying attention to. But the the Supreme Court of Florida has ordered redistricting because they didn't like the constitutional amendments the way they did the redistricting. You're getting the full melt. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor. So nobody knows. Canalock is a patented, charcoal-activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no-smell technology. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway, or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810 259 571. Get growing with Gromax. Indoor, outdoor, beginner, or a warehouse full of Gavitas, probiotic organics, or huge production with Max Power Monster Aeroponics Systems. We can help you rock it. YouTube Gromax with two X's. Customer services why we're blowing up. And I'm Dave. My cell number is 906 221 2111. We also specialize in electrical and HVAC and new double ended bulb technology. 906 221 2111. Get growing. Gromax. 
get the beach bong ready for sunshine and sandy beaches in McGrill, Jamaica this November as the High Tides Cannabis Cup moves from Amsterdam to the Caribbean. Your trip starts with the absolute best rates on airfare, hotel, events, and all your Cannabis Cup travel needs at TravelCannabisCup.com. Come stay with us, relax in the sun, play in the sun, and smoke down with the cool people, man. Get to the High Tides Jamaica Cannabis Cup. Best travel prices right now at TravelCannabisCup.com. In the Outback, we let the bold flavours speak for themselves with new wood-fire grilled flat iron steak. Just $13.99 for a limited time. And now over 70 lunch combinations every day starting at just $6.99. It's lunch at last at Outback. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. Welcome back to the PetPain.com studios where we come to you live every day from 7 until 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to talk about marijuana news, culture, entertainment, and lifestyle. I think marijuana is a lifestyle. I do. Do you think marijuana is a lifestyle? I would uh, ask the people in, uh, in uh, Oregon. Ask the people in Oregon because they passed the uh, recreational marijuana thing And the Oregonians have been like, well, I don't know. Should I get on the plane? Should I not get on the plane? I got the weed in the basket. Uh, Oh, just put the the weed, leave the weed in the car. Leave the weed in the car. No, they're going to take it from us at the airport. You know, it's going to be a big police situation. I don't want to go to jail. I'm going on vacation. That's what's going on. (laughs) Uh, According to this story in the, uh, what is this? Uh, Consumerist.com. Oregonians can now fly with recreational marijuana, dash, and here's the butt. The, the devil's always in the details. When you drop that butt, you know something's coming. As long as they're traveling within the state. That's the big butt. There's the qualifier. Uh, you can't be traveling out of state. The friendly skies over Oregon just got a bit friendlier to residents who don't want to leave their weed at home. Airport officials at Portland International Airport said travelers can now legally board planes with up to an ounce of marijuana for in-state flights only, of course. Officials point out the Transportation Security Administration is not, I repeat, not, I shall say that again, not focused on finding marijuana, but instead would rather expend energy keeping up with security and safety issues, reports UPI. To ensure that travelers are complying to the letter of the law, TSA agents will notify police when marijuana is found during security screenings. If the pot is within legal weight limit and the passenger is at least 21 and flying in state, they'll be cleared for travel. The rules are included in an update to the Port of Portland's travel tips for PDX. Traveling across state lines is still a federal crime, said Steve Johnson with the Port of Portland. Uh, However, if someone is flying within the state to another destination in the state, traveling with recreational marijuana is allowable if they meet all the legal requirements. As a reminder, smoking of any kind is illegal on all commercial aircraft in the U.S., so no mid-flight mile-high try, uh, mile-high tries. <laughs> Anyone found to be on the wrong side of the law will have the option to either store the marijuana in their car or hand it over to someone the age of 21 who isn't traveling. It can also be surrendered to be destroyed by law enforcement. And I'm sure there'll be lots of people taking that option, right? No, just take it away and just, yeah, just put it in the grinder. Don't, yeah, mix it up into some pulp and throw it away. Watch it go down the toilet. No, the toilet. Yeah, that was $100 an ounce weed. Nobody cares. I'm just saying. So I think that's funny that, uh, you know, I, this was, this is already so, something that's settled uh, in Denver. I mean, if you're in Denver and you're flying to another airport inside of uh, Colorado, nobody really gives a boo as long as you're not hauling a, a buttload of weed around. I would say that if you got a half ounce or a quarter or maybe even up to an ounce of some fine kind that you discovered in some shop somewhere or out of somebody's garden or maybe you picked it on your own. But uh, being able to fly with it is a bonus, isn't it? Now, if we can only get them to say, look, I'm from Oregon, 
especially the medical patients, because the medical patients, they always got to go where they're going to get their marijuana anyways if you're a medical patient. If, you, if you're going to, you know, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. If you're going to you're Washington um, or if you're going to Colorado uh, or any medical state for that matter, especially those states, Alaska, you know, the places, um, you're going to have to buy your weed there once you get there. And most states, it seems there are some, and we'll have to go over that list. That's something else I got to look up. Is the states that have what they call reciprocity in their medical marijuana rules, meaning uh, that they'll reciprocate uh, identification cards. You can use your medical marijuana card here in our state. That's reciprocity uh, in the meaning of that law. So I got to have to get that list because there is a list. It's a short list compared to the longer list of states that have some form of medical marijuana law. Um, and you also got to pay attention and make sure, you know, because <clears throat> I guess here's the question about reciprocity, right? So in Michigan, PTSD has been approved as a condition for medical marijuana use. It's a qualifying condition. In some states, they have medical marijuana where that is not a, a, a valid qualifying condition where they are. So if you have reciprocity, you might have a condition and have access to medical marijuana in a place that ha- you know, recognizes your card, but doesn't like the idea that your condition in their state isn't approved. You see how reciprocity can be a little sticky wicket there? I mean, what if you're, okay, so if you're not a patient in Michigan, because um, Michigan doesn't allow, say, I don't know, Neil Patella, which they do. They always, you know, that seems like to be a common one. It seems like a weird one, but it's a common one. It's, it's, I guess it's extremely painful, the Neil Patella. I don't know. I got to check into that. Never heard of it. Uh, but if, let's say, for example, example, Neil Patella isn't covered. It is. Well, let's just say it isn't in Michigan. And you go to some other state that has a medical marijuana law and it's covered there. You're not going to get a card there anyways because you don't have a card here. Yeah, so you're, there's reciprocity wouldn't apply. But the other way around, Neil Patella is covered here. You got a card for it. You go to, to another state and Neil Patella is not covered, but they have reciprocity. Don't you think the people there with your condition that can't get medical marijuana would be a little ticked off that their state allows you to come there and get it? I'm just saying reciprocity is a funny thing. Didn't want to make a big, long speech out of it. Uh, but if you, if you, do, you know, sometimes these things, if you don't look beyond their surface, you don't discover the, all the nuances about what this means and what it doesn't mean. And then at least if you've pondered the idea a little bit, kicked it around, sniffed it, checked it out, flipped it over, checked it out from all angles. When somebody uh, asks you a question about it, you're well-founded enough on it because you've educated, you've investigated You've done a little sniffing around on this. I mean, you've given yourself a chance to identify with the subject matter. And that's really what the bigger problem is in the larger scheme of things anyways. Is beating back that 70 plus year propaganda message, the whole reefer madness thing, the whole kit and caboodle, it stinks to high heaven. Zero of it applies. I'm just telling you. If you know anything about marijuana from a practical experience standpoint whatsoever, you would know that none of that message has meaning other than it's bull crap. It's all shit. So, I mean, if you're scared about it because you've never had any practical experience, you've never, you know, marijuana has always been something that happened over there, not in your backyard. uh, You get a better example of this. It's harder to be scared by the boogeyman messages when you've got this familiarity. And in the larger scheme of things, again, what I'm trying to get to is that's that's if you broaden this out a bit, pull the lens back and get the nation in the view instead of just your little world. You'd see that this is a baby steps thing. It's not going to get done in big sweeps. I mean, it seems like it's happening that way, but you got to remember, marijuana in California as a medical scheme didn't come along until 1996. Yes, there were other things in the mid-90s and late 80s over this. Uh, very small and, few, you know, minuscule in the grander scheme of things. But marijuana as a broader concept, statewide legalized, 
for medical purposes, or at least that's how it's been packaged, it was a new concept only 20 years ago. So it's taken 20 years for it to get to this stage. And I think anybody that knows anything about the planning of this marketplace, and again, I'll say we're all pawns to this. I'll say all the, the pros and the cons. These are all artificial arguments in the bigger thing. If you, if you really pull back and get the big, big view, you'll see that these are all artificial arguments. This marketplace was planned long ago by the very few, by the smart, by the, you know, I guess, strategizers. And we were meant to fight this fight for them, I, I believe. I, I wholly believe that. If you want to pick it out of my brain one day, I'll tell you about it. Uh, but I think it's funny that um, in places like <laughs> Oregon, it's okay to play, you know, fly in, in state with the weed. And you can do that apparently in Denver too. Again, I just wonder how many people are actually doing that. I think there are people doing it. I, I've had people tell me that they've done this. You don't want to make the mistake of uh, having, you know, pack that bag for in-state travel and take it out state, though. That would not be a smart move at all. You know that's going to be in the paper the next day, and you're going to have one of those ugly mug shots that you don't look very comfortable in. That's not where we want to see you. It's not. Uh, next on the list, what else is popping for talk? Um, some common sense talk about taxing uh, marijuana in uh Pennsylvania being the wrong approach. Uh, I'm just going to touch on this real quick because um, this is a story that came out of what? Philly.com? Yes. Uh, Philly 420, taxing Pennsylvania mer- uh, medical marijuana at the wrong approach. Uh, something that was almost overlooked in the compassionate use legislation that already passed in the state Senate is a serious upcharge to seriously ill residents. Senate Bill 3 already includes a 6% what they call surcharge on medical marijuana products. Now the House there is considering a tax. The Rep. Ron uh, uh, Marsico? It must be Marsico. (coughs) He's a a Republican out of Dauphin. uh, Has proposed having medical marijuana fees and charges funneled into substance abuse treatment. See, this is, yeah. This makes sense, I think, from a certain standpoint. Why not make sure that there's substance abuse programs available? And they did this with, um, uh, uh, you know, in Michigan here at least, with uh, uh, gambling, gaming. When they put in casinos, they bolstered up a program for people that had gaming problems. People who were addicted to gambling. It's a serious problem. It's like any other uh, disease, addiction. It'll destroy you. Um, So I think it's smart to have these kinds of programs. And it may be even smart from a practical standpoint to have the implementation of the program have rules and regulations uh, for which to, you know, make way for that, to to create that those rules and programs to, to fund existing ones, whatever it is that they're doing. But also, I think at the same time, it tells you kind of the mentality behind people who think that marijuana causes addiction. If anything, from a practical standpoint, If you look at its history and use on the map just in recent modern days, the facts, the statistics bear out that states that have medical marijuana laws see a 25% reduction in prescription drug overdoses. And this paints a picture as to why on its face it would seem like Big Pharma doesn't want uh, marijuana to be an option for medical purposes. Because... Obviously, if they're not overdosing on some of these drugs anymore, they're using less of them. If they're using less, uh, you know, this is a problem for the guys that have a revenue stream attached to the sales of those drugs. These are commercialized drugs. And they're certainly much more dangerous than the marijuana is. Seriously, look it up. Google it. 25% reduction in prescription drug overdoses, particularly wrapped around opiates for the use of pain in states that have medical marijuana approved as a use for that purpose. (coughs) Deb Beck, president of the Drug and Alcohol Service Providers Organization of Pennsylvania, testified before Morisco during a joint information gathering hearing by the House Health and Judiciary Committees in April. Her group denounced efforts to legalize medical marijuana and decriminalize recreational marijuana. 
Marisco has since proposed that the Department of Drug and Alcohol Programs administer the marijuana program. I don't know where they borrowed this idea from where. SB3 uh, sought to create a separate state entity, a medical cannabis board, to oversee medical marijuana by itself. Marisco claims that uh, he is against additional bureaucracy in his attempt to put the issue under the purview of those who are dealing with alcoholism and gambling addiction. So it seems the Pennsylvania drug treatment industry might be on board with cannabis therapy, but only if they have control over it and they get a piece of the cash pie. You see how government does this? You see how big money influences this kind of law, even when it's being pushed by people or it's being, you know, uh, I guess in, in Pennsylvania, this would be a bad example because I don't think they have a people's initiative process in that state. It's Commonwealth. They don't have this uh, ability to petition the government via uh, these ballot initiatives to change the law. you got to go to the legislature and get it done. I'm so glad it's not that way everywhere else, honestly, because so often legislators who have to get money from big money interests who are willing to give it to them in order to get elected can't vote in the way that they were, their constituents would want because they need that money to get back elected again to at least vote on some of the stuff that maybe some of their constituents would want. Because nowadays, all their, you know, it's the, the, the people who are elected uh, end up picking their voters rather than the voters uh, picking the people that are elected. I mean, these corrupt politicians... And that's what it is. It's clearly what it is. You're screwing with the system to stack the deck in your favor. That's not what politics are about. Get on your stump and tell us how you're going to fix things or how things are going to be better under your administration. Don't be over here tinkering with the background numbers where people aren't looking to cheat so that, you know, you get elected no matter what happens. And that's what redistricting is. And that's what's going to move me on to this other story. Uh, these people in Pennsylvania in the largest this uh, to wrap up this story. Uh, I guess I better finish reading it up. Prescriptions for penicillin and over the counter medications like ibuprofen are tax free. Even acne cream isn't taxed. Uh, that's why it's likely additional uh, fees called the surcharge in SB3 instead of taxes. Doing so avoids a rift of legal problems. Uh, it's an interesting, interesting story. I did put a, a Facebook link to it on our Facebook page, so check it out at philly.com if you want the entire story. It is way too long uh, to put its entirety onto this program. We'll come back in a minute and talk more of marijuana news right here on the Full Melt Show. Don't go away. You're getting the Full Melt. Introducing Sacred Elements, a place for natural and alternative healing for the mind, body, and soul. Sacred Elements. It's one place, all solution. Alkaline water, herbal remedy, essential oil. Sacred Elements. Natural and organic shampoo, lotion, pain cream, bath salt. Sacred Elements. Beeswax candles and handmade crafts, canes and walking sticks, artwork, jewelry, and repurposed goods. Sacred Elements. Next to the Sweet Leaf, 400 South Door Highway, Flint. 11 to 7 daily, close If Sunday. you're Call like us, your pets are just animals. animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? <laughs> Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. We interrupt this commercial break for a programming insert. And the programming insert is to give you this specific information. <laughs> News flash. This is just a big excuse to fix the audio glitch, which is in our automation system. I'm fixing that glitch as we speak. News flash. Coming up on this very program. This just happened. Uh, we are going to get a Butters update. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know who Butters is, Butters is the goat. 
Uh, and he is uh, the goat that hangs out. How am I doing this? I got to do. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. How am I fixing this? Oh, I do not want to have to go and change all these independently. I might have to do that. Will not be happy about that move. But I'm going to fix this break and hope that I don't have to fix the next break because it is a mess up in this automation system now. Who got up in here and messed with my automation? It was me. It was all me. Don't listen to that crazy guy because he did it all by himself. Stand by. We now uh, return to your regularly scheduled commercial break forthwith. Introducing Sacred Elements, a place for natural and alternative healing for the mind, body, and soul. Sacred Elements. It's one place, all solutions. Alkaline water, herbal remedy, essential oil. Sacred Elements. Natural and organic shampoo, lotion, pain cream, bath salt. Sacred Elements. Beeswax candles and handmade crafts, canes and walking sticks, artwork, jewelry, and repurposed goods. Sacred Elements. Next to this weekly, 400 South Door Highway, Flint. 11 to 7 daily, closed Sunday. Call 810-259-2570. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for PetPain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pets. You know, it's not easy out there, but it can be easier. And when it comes to medical marijuana in Michigan and chronic pain management, Dr. Bob Townsend, renowned for his patient advocacy and deep understanding of how patients and medical marijuana certifications fit together, makes it his hallmark to educate and provide the best holistic treatment for your condition. His knowledgeable staff makes you feel warm and welcome. And Dr. Bob makes you feel well. With locations across the state in Cadillac and Gaylord, Kalamazoo, Marquette, Mount Pleasant, Muskegon, Saginaw, Traverse City, you can't beat the convenience and feeling you get knowing you have someone on your side that cares. Denali Healthcare is on the web at DenaliHealthCareMI.com. Get answers to your holistic health questions or schedule an appointment now by calling 989-339-4464. Chronic pain management and holistic health answers is what they do. It's all they do. DenaliHealthCareMI.com. Get your certification and peace of mind now by making an appointment with Dr. Bob Townsend at 989-339-4464. Get the beach bong ready for sunshine and sandy beaches in Negril, Jamaica this November as the High Times Cannabis Cup moves from Amsterdam to the Caribbean. Your trip starts with the absolute best rates on airfare, hotel, events, and all your Cannabis Cup travel needs at TravelCannabisCup.com. Come stay with us, relax in the sun, play in the sand and smoke down with the cool people, man. Get to the High Times Jamaica Cannabis Cup. Best travel prices right now at TravelCannabisCup.com. Get growing with Gromax. Indoor, outdoor, beginner, or a warehouse full of Gavitas, probiotic organics, or huge production with Max Power Monster Aeroponics Systems. We can help you rock it. YouTube Gromax with two X's. Customer services why we're blowing up. And I'm Dave. My cell number is 906-221-2111. We also specialize in electrical and HVAC and new double-ended bulb technology. 906-221-2111. Get growing. Gromax. I had to do this again. I had to do it again. Just briefly. Bear with me briefly. This is what happens with live radio, I'm just telling you. The alternative which just wasn't acceptable. Just had to interrupt it. I think I found a way to fix it, too, so it won't happen in the future. Give me a second to fix that. And here it is. We'll do it like this and like this. Well, that's a big space right there. We're going to do it like this. That. And I think this will do it. I figured it out. Did it do it? Come on. Fix this. Do, 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 do. There. That might have fixed it. Now I'm going to do one slight alteration because I overfixed it. And we're going to do this. I think that might have worked. 
I am sorry to interrupt that again. I had to do it, though. We'll pick it back up from where we left off. I'll see you in just a second. In the Outback, we let the bold flavors speak for themselves with new wood-fire-grilled flat-iron steak, just $13.99 for a limited time. And now over 70 lunch combinations every day starting at just $6.99. It's lunch at last at Outback. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. On the good days it is. I'm just saying. I did not like that. Reorganizing and getting our stuff back together here. Sometimes, sometimes, occasionally, every every once in a great while, you'll catch us with our pants down, and we'll have a full meltdown. We don't want the full meltdown. That that was not what we were trying to go for. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, there was a story here, uh, and I think this was just you know not good thinking. Um, ever since last uh, November when the federal government made a, an edict change through another memo series um, with regards to the enforcement of marijuana on a federal level inside of uh, uh, you know reservations, American Indian reservations. Uh, the edict was, if you want to end up being like Colorado or if you want to do something like Washington, if you want to do like D.C. did or if you want to do something like Alaska where you just said, OK, buoy it to all the medical stuff. We're just going to legalize marijuana here for the adults on our establishment inside of our reservation. Now, you can't go out of a reservation with it. But adults, if you want to do something like that, have a well-regulated scheme like they have in Colorado. Well, we won't enforce uh, marijuana prohibition. On tribal lands. It's got to be well regulated, though. It has to meet the tenets of that coal memorandum. And those tenets are uh, along the lines of this. Look, keep it away from kids. Uh, keep it from going over state lines. You know, those kind of smart, commonsensical things. Regulate it. Make sure that this is handled properly. If you do a good job with it, maybe we'll... And this is the kind of, I think, the dangling carrot theory if you do a good job with it in this experimentation in social policy at least currently under the obama administration will look the other way because there isn't an issue you've proven that you can do this and not have calamity befall society and i think that's a smart way to handle it from a policy standpoint you give the states their rights. If the state doesn't want to do it, the state says no. If the state does want to do it, they say, this is America. It's a free country. Let the voters decide, right? Um, and so there's this story about these, this American Indian tribe. As it turns out, uh, I want to double check this figure because uh, one of the commenters on this story when I posted it on our Facebook page earlier today said there were five people in this tribe. I don't know that the article reflected that. Memory doesn't uh, recall that, in, you know, for me. I read the article. I'll reread it again. Maybe I missed it. Uh, this is out of KRCRTV. So it's KRCRTV.com. Uh, federal agents raided large-scale commercial marijuana grows on the Pitt River XL Reservation and the Altruist Indian Reservation in uh, Modoc County on Wednesday. A 30-page affidavit by the California Department of Justice said one of the grow sites was 100 yards from the tribe's Desert Rose Casino in an event center. In the affidavit, investigators said tribal chairman Phil De, uh, Del Rosa, vice chairman Darren Rose, and lawyers with the tribal law firm Fredericks, Peebles, and Morgan told the Modoc County Sheriff's Office on March 20th that they plan to start a large-scale medical marijuana collective. They also told deputies that they had already let the United States Attorney's Office and the California Department of Justice know about their plans. Now, they claimed there would be indoor marijuana growth, but no dispensary and no sale of marijuana on the site. So I guess they were planning under Colorado, I'm sorry, under California medical marijuana law uh, that they were going to be a large collective. But for whom? 
it seems to me they had just plans on growing marijuana and 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 selling it somewhere, but they didn't describe where. I think the federal government's position on this, just looking at it from a, a you know a layman's standpoint, is look, if you're going to do this like you do gaming, where you go onto casino property and you go into your casino and you do your gambling, and then you leave with your winnings. We're not going to, the federal federal government doesn't get involved. I mean, these are sovereign territories. You can create your own laws. Previously, they wouldn't allow this in the marijuana realm. Now they've said we'll allow it. But again, the idea is you go in, if you're, if you're not on tribal lands, you could go onto tribal lands. Nothing says you can't go there. You could have total tourism in a non-marijuana state, recreationally speaking. On an Indian tribe. You go there, you use, you buy, you use it, you do all your stuff while you're there, and then you come back. Don't bring it with you. I mean, th- that's kind of how you do booze, right? You go to the bar, you go inside the bar, then you have access to the booze once they've checked out who you are. They've checked your ID and made sure you are allowed under state law to consume alcohol. Then you go purchase your alcohol. That's how most places do it. There are some uh, always exceptions to the rule. Generally speaking, that's how it's done in restaurants, bars, and establishments all across the country. Now, the, if, you, if you've gone to a bar, you know that, you, that the bar is not going to let you take that alcohol outside unless it's in a roped-off patio area that they're super serving food. You can't. It's got to be a service area. It can't be an area that is exterior to the establishment unless it's one of these roped-off areas that's inclusive to the service of the establishment. So you can't go out on the sidewalk with your martini and stand out there and call for a cab. The cops will tackle you. And so should the bar bar owners or the people who are serving alcohol. Most places would not let you get past the door with that glass. You have to have a, you know, I guess in Michigan, like, you know, you could buy your alcohol there, but it would have to be in a closed container and you'd have to take it off premises for consumption. It's a carry out license. So I think what may bother the feds about this is a number of things that are revealed in the story. But uh, that's not what these guys seem to have described when they alerted authorities as to their plans. Uh, On May 14th, the U.S. Attorney's Office sent an email to the tribe saying the size of the grow and the scope of the operation would be a violation of federal law and they could potentially face prosecution. (coughs) Probably what I would have said, too. The affidavit also reveals a rift in the tribe. At the end of June, Del Rosa's sister, Wendy Del Rosa, sent a letter to the U.S. Attorney's Office claiming she is the tribe's chairperson and the secretary treasurer. She said in a letter her brother was growing marijuana without the tribe's permission. Wendy asked the federal government to, quote, close this illegal drug operation, end quote. Wendy also mentioned the facility was illegally funded by an international cigarette tycoon, Jerry Montour. And it get, and the plot thickens. The affidavit goes on to say that Montour, 58, is a Canadian and CEO of Grand River Enterprises in Ontario, Canada. Agents dug into Montour's past and found that he has a criminal history, including cultivation of narcotics in 1991 and a 1988 conviction for conspiracy to import a narcotic that was posted by the Hamilton Spectator on October 3rd of 2006. The agents concluded in the affidavit that they believe Altaris Indian Rancheria tribe was working with Montour to distribute these marijuana plants internationally, which is a federal offense. So I don't know, you know, it really it really never did say that there were five people in this tribe, but it seems like it seems like being a, it is a family affair nonetheless, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure how many people you have to have on your reservation to qualify as a reservation. I mean, I, I don't it seems like there's got to be more than five. These people have to be part of the tribal council and then they're in fighting. And they're probably drunk when they're infighting. I'll bet you if you look into the story further, you'd find out that they were drinking. I don't want to seem like I'm uh, drawing conclusions without reading the book, um, but I am. So, uh, (laughs) I'm sorry. Do we have time to do this right now? Oh, we don't right now. Let me see if I can squeeze in another piece of news because I did kind of uh, uh, promote the idea we talk about it. Um, I want to. I guess we'll come back and do the butters update during the commercial break when everything was going absolutely wrong. And I have a feeling there may be just a tiny bit still of that left sputtering around in there. I hope not. 
uh, as the police would say. I hope I didn't leave a ghost in the machine. Uh, uh, you see what I did there? Police? Ghost in the machine? Nobody caught that. It went right over their heads. So, um, didn't want to talk about that. I did. We did already talked about the first church of cannabis of filing suit. Uh, this is an important story, and I do have a couple of seconds to talk about it, so I'll try and squeeze something in because I think it's rather important. House Republicans say no to allowing federal studies of medical marijuana. We told you about this story yesterday uh, that uh, they would slip this uh, bill in, uh, this amendment in the bill. Apparently, it has been lost. This is out of the Washington Post at thewashingtonpost.com. Medical marijuana is now sold in nearly half a dozen, uh, I'm sorry, half of all states. <coughs> and even one red state has legalized it for recreational use. Veterans of wars in Afghanistan and Iraq are clamoring for access to treat post-traumatic stress disorder. Loosening pot laws polls better in three swing states than any 2016 presidential candidate. Did you hear that? That's worth repeating. Loosening pot laws polls better in three swing states than any 2016 presidential candidate right now. But House Republicans have so far declined to keep pace with the shifting public opinion. They did so again late Wednesday when a rare bipartisan pot proposal died a quiet death in the House that would have reclassified marijuana so that national laboratories could conduct credible research on its safety and efficacy as a medical treatment, end quotes the article. The amendment to a bill scheduled for debate Thursday on the House floor would have encouraged the National Institutes of Health and Drug Enforcement Administrations to work together to allow studies. I read that like like I was Wolf Blitz, Blitzer. He breathes in weird places. Uh, the National Institutes of Health and the Drug Enforcement Administration to work together to allow studies of the benefits and risks of marijuana to treat cancer, epilepsy, glaucoma, and post-traumatic stress disorder, among other conditions. The vote is the latest action to reflect National Republicans' uncertainty on how to address shifting public sentiments about marijuana use. Although the GOP supported steps to allow state medical marijuana programs to flourish, Republicans generally have not supported efforts to advance national policy on legislation. Uh, the whole idea behind this article, because I'm afraid that uh, I'm going to end up uh, in uh, commercial land territory before I get to the point, which is they would have cl- this uh, art. This article gets get to gets to the point at the very end. It's about the idea that the amendment that was offered uh, was to reclassify marijuana in the Schedule One category. And re- remain in Schedule 1, but have a, sec- a separate designation as Schedule 1R so that it could undergo medical uh, testing. Uh, so that it would lift all the barriers to medical testing, which is a very smart thing to do. It was proposed for the first time ever. Some answer to this problem. We want it rescheduled. It needs to be descheduled, in my uh, opinion. I think it should be listed as a, as, as a food product like anything else. It shouldn't be in the classification of drugs. It doesn't really belong there. It doesn't really fit the pieces that are needed to put it in a classification. That's just my personal opinion. Others would disagree. In fact, many others would disagree. Somebody in our, our, in our own community, many people in our own community, the marijuana community, would disagree with me on that statement. But they would agree with me that it doesn't belong in Schedule 1. And these people in Congress uh, tried to take it out. It's a baby step, right? It's a baby step. They put it in there and then let it die quietly. The crack of the door is widening. That's all I'm saying. It's getting wider a little bit at a time. This is not going to get all swept through in one big chunk. So many people think that it's going to go that way. That uh, we, if, we, if we're powerful enough and we band together, we can get this to go and it'll sweep the nation. And it's going to. <laughs> but it isn't done quite that easily. In each place where this has been legalized, either recreationally or, or uh, for medical purposes, um, a lot of heavy bargaining was done with legislatures. A lot of educating of people, a lot of educating of groups and organizations, a lot of uh, you know, moving positions around and explaining yourself to people about how things are in reality versus what they've been told all their lives because if you ask my baby boomer mother about marijuana she will cross her eyes they will roll up in her head and and she will think that you're talking about the devil incarnate because it is lsd it is heroin it is cocaine it is uh you know it is all of these other nasty drugs it's the same thing in her head 
She never had enough experience with these drugs on her own to distinguish between them with regards to danger. And so she was never able to pass that information along. Just stay away from drugs. Please tell me you will never get into drugs. Well, I would say that the safest person around any kind of drug is an educated person. Somebody who knows about these things. Because you tend not to get involved with what you know is going to cause a problem. But if you lie to people about all the drugs and you tell them that all of them are bad, they're all the same. They're going to look at you and they're going to tell you you're an idiot. What kind of fool do you think I am? Really? Because they can't all be the same. Kids are smart enough to know this. They have different recommendations right in the bottles. They can read it right in the bottles in your very medicine cabinet. So they argue that they're all the same. Kids are going to try them because they know you're lying about something and they want to know what you're lying about. It's just how it is. Uh, so that's what's going on there. So we're going to come up after the commercial break. I, I, I think this, uh, this guy out in, uh, uh, rural Saranac, Michigan is a hoot. Uh, we love Joe Brown from the Michigan Hemp Company and all their great, fantastical hemp-based CBD products. They got some really great stuff, but Joe's got a family farm out in Saranac that reminds me of, who's that guy? Who's that guy? He's got the TV show. He lives out in the woods. He's got bare feet. What is that guy's name? I got to think of it now, too. That coming up, a Butters Update in the woods next. You're getting the full milk. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal-activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no smell technology. Imagine a world where patients can use marijuana like any other medicine. The Marijuana Patients Organization challenges the status quo by helping our neighbors to enjoy a better quality of life. Visit the MPO at marijuanapatients.org and enjoy informative articles, engaging debates, and information about treatments, doctors, and dispensaries in your area. Over 50,000 people have registered at MarijuanaPatients.org since 2010. Join us at the Marijuana Patients Organization today. MarijuanaPatients.org. It's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway, or call 810 259 25 The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the Allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com, CBD relief for your pets. Introducing Sacred Elements, a place for natural and alternative healing for the mind, body, and soul. Sacred Elements. It's one place, all solutions. Registered, licensed, certified, or gay. Sacred Elements. Massage, hypnosis, Reiki. Sacred Elements. Raindrop, aroma and color therapy. Body detox, ministry, life coaching, weight and nutrition counseling. Sacred Elements. Next to the Sweet Leaf, 400 South Door Highway, Flint. 11 to 7 daily, closed Sunday. Call 810-259-257. Radio Show. Radio Show. Run away. 
me mad, especially when I think I've got all the bugs worked out of the machine. I did not obviously get all the bugs worked out of the machine. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't know, there's, uh, there's some other bug in the machine, too, because I was during the break getting ready to do the uh, Butters update. Butters is a goat living on the uh, family farm out in the woods in uh, Sarnak, Michigan with Joe Brown. Uh, who is that guy? He's, you know, Joe Brown's going to know. I tried dialing on the phones uh, when I was uh, uh, during the break to get out on a different uh, phone bank. It's a good thing I got more than one phone bank here uh, because if I didn't, I don't know how I'd get out to him. It's not dialing out. So I had to switch some gears around. Let me see if I can. I got to call him from a different line now. So uh, I have to push buttons while you're not, you know, while you're listening to me. Do, 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 do. Let me, I got to start over again because now I lost track of my button pushing. Do, do. Calling uh, out to Grand, Grand Old Cernak, Michigan. I hope I dialed it right. Do, 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 do. Let me push the button here. I think we got him on there now. I hope I didn't get the wrong number. That would suck. Hello? Hey, it's uh, Joe Brown, isn't it? Yeah, this is Joe. How are you doing? I'm doing terrific. We are on the air, sir. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, hey, will you get my line right there? I'm fishing right now, and I got my... Will you grab my line, please? I got a fish on my line. I'm going to have uh, somebody grab it. Yeah, I, how's everybody doing tonight? Everybody's doing great, I think, man. I mean, uh, I've screwed up the commercial breaks uh, this evening. And uh, I don't know. There was uh, there was some audio issues. It, it really bugs me. There were telephone problems during the break. I was trying to call you on a different phone bank. It wouldn't let me dial out. <clears throat> so I had to use the backup line. That's all buzzy. There's a buzz in the line. <laughs> no, no worries. There's a buzz on this line over here too. <laughs> it sounds like you got a buzz on the line and a line in the water. Is anything yeah, is anything tugging on it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we didn't catch it. Uh, we've had a real slow day fishing today because of the rain. Uh, last couple of days ago, it slowed the fishing down, but we're, we're out here trying to give it our best shot. Look, I want to do a uh, giver. I, I figured it would be smart to, uh, as a feature just because everything is so odd out there. I see all the pictures you post on Facebook all the time out at the uh, family farm. To say that this is a family farm in official sorts, I guess, is accurate. But from a functional standpoint, it is a little rudimentary, isn't it, uh, Joe? Yeah, this is very uh, rudimentary is a good word. It's uh, it's off the grid. We, uh, you know, we collect all our water from an artesian spring um, that we use to drink and do our dishes, and we catch our food, and we grow our food, and uh, it's very simple living out here. I do have the Internet now so that I can continue to work for uh, Can Products USA. Uh, so I'm grateful for that. But up until a couple of days ago, I was going off a cell phone. <laughs> well, you know, um, it, I, I guess people don't understand really uh, how roughing it is out there. I mean, you guys are really roughing it. When you had some uh, weather come along recently, it nearly washed you away, didn't it? I mean, you're sleeping in a tent. You wake up with water. Oh, yeah. I had 16 inches of water. Uh, it, when the flood hit, I had 16 inches of water underneath my mattress my, and I was floating in my tent uh, when the flood hit and we had to literally it took us and a bunch of volunteers from Southside Heaven to come out and we had to move the entire encampment up to the high ground including clear it out like this is a this wasn't cleared out it wasn't just like grab stuff Se and move it seconds we left to, Joe listen I gotta ask you what about Butters did he survive the flood yeah oh, Butters is doing great yeah he survived the flood he's got a the Full Melt Show is a production of TFM Media.